hey guys welcome to the channel there's a lot of new hardware that's available now or will be out soon the reviews and benchmarks show a slight to significant increase in performance over last gen so i'm wondering if thermals have gone up as well i haven't been able to get a 30 series graphics card that would fit my case but i think it's a matter of time so between now and when i manage to buy one i was thinking if there's anything that i could do to preemptively improve thermals in my build I got a 3950X and a 2080 Ti on a custom loop with a single 240mm rad in the Ghost S1. There are some upgrades that I'm thinking of doing over the next few weeks like using a third party fan bracket or installing a DDC pump to replace the stock bracket and the DCLT pump that I'm using at the moment. Those things are on the way so we'll save them for the next video. For now, I'll start with something as simple as installing a fan below the power supply. A bottom fan is common in an air cooled setup but missing in most custom loop builds because this opening is typically used to remove tubings. I've had to rearrange how I did my tubing to fit a full size fan but more on that later. I used the ultra preset in heaven for one hour to test the effectiveness of having a bottom fan. These are the undervolt settings for both CPU and GPU. During the test, the Ice Bear LT Solo was running at a constant 2400 RPM while the radiator fans were locked at 1600 RPM. This is the setting that I use on a daily basis. It's the most stable setting that I got during undervolting while dialing in my preference for performance, thermals, and acoustics. The sound meter is set at half a meter away from the case which is the usual distance I'm sitting at and the case is at stock configuration except for the 3D printed feed, which I'll link to in the description below. I tried installing the Noctua NF81225 as both intake and exhaust, along with several different fans, and this was the result. First off, I ran the fan as an exhaust, and the thermals were as if I didn't have any fan at all. I wanted to test this first because it's usually recommended to run the bottom fan as an exhaust when the GPU is air-cooled, as this creates negative pressure and helps remove hot air from the GPU. However, in a water-cooled setup, it's better to set the fan as an intake, although it doesn't seem to change the temps all that much. I also did the test with an airflow and a pressure optimized fan. I got similar results as if we were to run the NF812 as an exhaust, but with better noise. I included an A1215 slip fan in the test as well, as that's what I've seen many use in their air-cooled builds due to space constraints. The results are similar to what we've seen before with the other fans, only that it's a bit louder. To fit the fan beneath the power supply, I needed to do a few changes to my loop. In most custom loops with a single 240mm rad on top in the S1, this space is usually used to route the tubing from the CPU block to the radiator or to the GPU block. So the first thing I needed to do was reroute the tubing. To make it easier, I swapped the position of the rad so that the inlet and the outlet were at the back of the case above the motherboard as opposed to over the power supply. Then I routed the tubing so that the rad goes into the CPU block first which then goes up the spine and then circles around the GPU block and that goes into the radiator. Now to make this work, I had to use the GPU water block inlet as the outlet but that's entirely fine. I didn't notice any difference in temps by swapping the GPU water block inlet and outlet even with a 2080 Ti and a 3950X in the loop. So that's what's needed to be done to fit an extra fan beneath the power supply for an additional reduction of 3 to 4 degrees. Whether it's worth doing this for that reduction is entirely up to you. Especially when you consider that you might need to get additional fittings or custom power cables to set it up this way. If you're using entry level or mid tier hardware, your money might be best spent elsewhere like an upgrade to the CPU or the GPU. As for me, I'll stick to this setup where possible when doing future upgrades to the build in the S1. If you've got ideas on what I could do to reduce the temps further, let me know in the comments, especially if it doesn't involve getting a second rad or a second top hat. Also, if you tried installing a fan beneath the power supply, let me know how that worked out for you. So that's it for me for now. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for your time.